All right, we have another really good day in the market today. So again, that's good news and bad news. Good news is we're seeing a gain. And I think overall, we've probably, it's a good chance we've hit the bottom of the market. Um, so that's great news. We're pushing close to 20,000 today, an overall gain of 14%. And if we look at the Dow it is gaining 3%. So we're pulling over a four, a multiple of four of what the market's doing today. So it be interesting to see when this crosses the 20,000 threshold. So overall, let's take a look at our big winners today. Uh, airlines are kind of coming back 10%. ERI, which is uh, Eldorado Resorts International, they're buying Caesars Palace, so they're up 20%. MFA is my favorite REIT, just because you can buy it low and it just went up 27% today. Oh, that's 37% today. So that's just wonderful. IVR and Vesco, we talk about that pretty much every day. They own the naming rights to the Denver Broncos Stadium. Not that I like the Broncos, because I don't, but they're up 28% today. A rare barely loser in uh, Bremen Resorts. So, but it's relatively flat. That's fine. Um, Let's see, Redwood Trust is up 20%, and Signet Jewelers, the mall, like K Jewelers and Jared's and all that, they are up 14% today, because when you look at the market and they basically are telling you that they think that, they're not talking about if or not when the market's gonna open up and when the economy's gonna open up, but how, that's an awesome, awesome sign. So there's probably a lot of delayed engagements happening, so we'll see what that does. Um, beyond that, let's see, Royal Caribbean's up 10%, RDI is up 13%, let's see, e EVRI, they're the cat, they do the ATM and cash services for casinos, they're up 26, 27%, and there's one huge winner, NRZ, it's a, it's a, it's a oil company, it's up 28%, TRTX is an, uh, uh, an oil and natural gas company is up 28%. But the one today that won it today was EFC. It's up 72%. So let's take a look at them. And then beyond that, I think moderate winners. All right, so Ellington Financial. Again, we always look at February 20th date. They were at 19. They got down to as low as 380. They don't show it on here, but they got down to as low as like 380. And they're sitting at 9 today. So they're doing really good off of this bump. So over the last week, they've been as low as a little under 4, and they're up at 9. They had a massive jump yesterday. No, that was today. Take it back. They have a massive jump today, and they do mortgage back assets, loans, and services. So when they talk about the economy being opened, I think that everything's priced to the fact that it's going to take forever to open, and when they think it's not, you see this big jump. So we're going to keep an eye on that and see if we have a little bit of, if we have a down market Friday, because the last three Fridays have been terrible because nobody wants to hold anything over the weekend because things moved so quickly. But if, if you have that kind of jump up right here, it's just itching to come up. It's looking for any excuse to come up. So if we see a drop and let's say it goes down to, let's say, five or something like that, I might just snap this up. So, but with that being said, that is how we're looking. So let's go to our stock screener tool. And we made some changes today. So uh, overall, we're sitting here at, let's see. Kind of got everything in the in the green except for CEQP, which is Crestwood, which is a real estate one. But that one is moving in the right direction. So we'll get that black before too long. Two, which is a real estate one, is our leader in the clubhouse at 115% gain. So I bought it at three, and it's now at 630, 6, 668. Uh, but we have 43%, 38%, 44%, 33%, 46%. And 14%, and this is I literally just bought it like a day ago, and it's already earned 14%. So that's definitely a very good deal. Um, all right, so let's talk about the candidates we have here. So I put in all the prices as of like probably five, 10 minutes ago, 
and sorted them by the upside and took a look at ERI and I had them as a limit order of 9.75, but they're at 17. So they're not going to hit that for a while if it goes down that far, if it ever goes down that far again. So I'm just taking it off the board and I can reevaluate, hence the red. Same thing for TRTX. I had a limit order at 275, but it's sitting at 536. So same deal. We just take it off, free some money up. And then I wanted to look at Signet since obviously it's still pulling a six point upside and it's doing so well off the bat. I decided, all right, if it, it's at 773, if it goes down to 735, I'll get 300 more shares, put about 2200 in, and that leaves us with an upside potential of about 14,000 roughly. And then MBLX, this was the one that I've always just had a really close eye on, hence it's in the red. I just, people are talking about, would it make it? Would it survive? Would it succeed? And the market as a whole has done really well for that. So let's take a look at N. There we go. MBLX. And you see over the last month, it's been relatively the same. It's pretty flat. Over the last week, it's, it's seen some jumps. So it wants to go up a little bit, but it's, it's still a little volatile. Over the last three months on death day, as I like to say, it was at 20. Now it's still under four. And so I was doing a little bit of reading on this. Well, first of all, it had a hold rating, nothing for selling, nothing for buying. And so I don't, I don't think a whole lot of people know what to do with it. But what I was reading today is that a, a bunch of insiders bought a ton of shares really low. So this and the fact that their finances look like they're going to be pretty stable for the time being, I thought, you know what, if we're going to do that, I at least owe myself putting a flyer in. So it's at 343 right now. I said, look, if it gets down to three, I'll put in basically about 185 shares, not much. Just a little bit of a flyer with tremendous upside. And if it goes down, then so be it. I can afford to, to do without that one. So we don't have any sell limit orders in there right now because the market's going up and there's no reason to put one in. Uh, you only really put sell limit orders in is if you think the market's going to go up and down in swing. So you want to take advantage of each one. So got rid of ERI and TRTX like we talked about. We added some more Signet. Um, oh, and yesterday we actually had one execute for Signet at 650. Obviously, that's why we're getting 15%. So all, it went all the way up from 650 to 750 pretty much in a day. So that's awesome. And we put an MFA order in of 1,600 shares. And it got down to $1.25, which is perfect. And it ended up lowering our cost basis, which is exactly what our end goal is. Um, so those are the ones we put in here. Uh, I put in some other metrics just so you guys can see what I'm doing here. So I went through and looked at all the individual deposits that I did for year to date, which totaled about 15,000. I have about 4,600 in cash. That's really kind of where these limit orders are gonna shake out. Holdings are how much we have for the current value of what we have right here. Total amount that I have in the accounts, 21,000. So far, we've seen a gain of about 6,000 for a gain of almost 40% in the last month. I mean, nobody's pulling 40%. Well, unless you're watching my channel and you're following what we're doing, and then you have a chance of doing 40%. So this is a well-tested area. This is how you make money. So what the other thing I did was I added another tab here for projections. I took everything that are holdings. I added the February 20th price and I wanted to get a sense on what the upside value would be when what I have currently holding, if I just don't touch it, what the valuation would be. So if that's the case, it'll total about 75,000 for a total gain of about 544%. Now I did the same thing for the limit orders. If these go through then and leave them alone, if it gets back to our February 20th price, this is what the upside value is. It's another 61,000 for a total gain of 800%. So totaling that together, if I just leave this alone, don't touch anything and let the market ride, uh, if it goes back up to our February 20th price, we'll have invested 21,000. 
returning 135,000 for a 637% gain. So that being said, it's a good day, but we always talk about, it's nice to talk about the upside. We want to talk about the downside. As much as we love the upside and we like seeing these things go up, this 20% means nothing when we're comparing it to the gains that we're looking for right here. So if it goes, if we have a down market, I'm going to take a look at certain stocks and certain ones that I'm not necessarily married to or I don't think have the biggest upside potential. I'll take some of the black they have here and put them in as sell orders. But the whole goal through this, our main number one metric is to drive these numbers down as much as possible. So that being said, let's see if we're at 20 yet. Oh, we're close to 20. And uh, probably see that. Hopefully we'll see it tomorrow. If not, we'll see it soon. But we're up 14% today. Talk to you soon. To get more information on the sales cheat code, go ahead and click on the subscribe button below. Also down below in the video description, you know, down there, there's a link that takes you to our website that gives you additional content, some additional freebies that we have, and gives you information on some programs that we have that have been proven to help people to make sales easy so that you can make the kind of money you want, live the lifestyle that you've always wanted, and not have to struggle in the process. And what might be the coolest thing of all is you don't have to put much effort into it. It truly is a cheat code that most people don't know about. And it's a cheat code that can change your life today. So click on the link below and let me help you start to experience these results starting right now.